Hello and welcome to another edition of Andy's Shed Live. This is Series 7, Episode 27 for Sunday the 2nd of August 2020. Hello there, how are you? And welcome to the uh, show uh, today. And uh, hello to everybody who's, uh, who's there watching us already. A little bit earlier um, today than uh, in previous weeks. So sorry if we've caught you out and you're having to watch this on catch up. Um, but it's new time, six o'clock. From now on, six o'clock on a Sunday evening, not half past six. Okay, um, Christopher2000 is there in the chat. Hi Christopher, hope you've had a good week out there in uh, in good old Australia. Um, yeah, we've got, oh, the, the, the watch total is going up. There's four people watching us now, so it, it rises steadily through the, through the hour or so. Um, I've had one or two things to do this week. One of, the, one of these has come in, in the, in the telephone department. This isn't mine. <laughs> it's a Mrs. Bucket phone. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um one of these um one of these strange sort of nineteen eighties contraptions. Apparently made in Italy. Really, really awful things to work on. This is not a British one you'll notice. It's got a it's got like a nut in the middle of the dial for getting the dial off. That shows you it's not one that was issued in Britain originally. It's one from overseas. And the guy that owns it is an antique dealer and he wants it converted to plug and socket for the UK. And we've converted it to plug and socket. We've done that bit on it. Um, but uh, the the only bit, the other bit, the thing that's wrong with it now, get the words out eventually, is uh, the handset cord has got an intermittent fault on it. You know. It, you listen and all of a sudden it goes dead and you jiggle the curly curly cord and then it comes back to life again. So we need a new curly cord for it. So I'm going to be doing that uh, at some point this week. Jimmy Myers is here. He says, hello. The best show of the week. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Flattery will get you everywhere. Um, and we're going to be doing something a little bit different this week because uh, as, uh, as the caption card said... What to look for on eBay. Now, I've been promising you this one for a while. Um, um, because a lot of people have been caught out. Um, we were having a discussion the other day about people getting caught out on eBay. And um, somebody buying a trim phone that got off the interior missing and stuff like that. So, what we're going to do tonight, uh, maybe not quite as long a show as normal tonight. But what we are going to do is we're going to just have a scan through eBay, through ebay.co.uk it is, um, for those of you in different parts of the world. We're going to have a scan through ebay.co.uk and we're going to have a look at it and at the, other, at the risk of offending everybody who's got something on eBay at the minute, I am going to tell you if I think it's good value, bad value, if you should buy it, if you should stay away from it. Um, I am going to say what I think. Because I'm not one of these YouTubers that tries to be nice to everybody and, and doesn't mention eBay and all one of these forums say, oh, you're not allowed to mention eBay in case it's somebody off the forum that put it, put it up there. To hell with it. If somebody's put something up there and trying to rip somebody off, I don't care who you are, I'm going to call it out. So what we're going to do is we are going to have a little look at, uh, at what's there up on eBay. Um at the moment. So without further ado we'll give it a go shall we? So let's go over to eBay. So there you have it and th th this is ebay.co.uk that we uh, that we've gone to here um, and this is this is the uh, the page that you land on uh, when you land on eBay so it says search for anything so I'm going to search for old telephones Right, and when it comes up, we'll see what we've got on the uh, on the old telephone front. So here you go. Um, uh, so I've just typed in old telephone, so that should bring up a plethora of different things, um, and all sorts, all sorts is is appearing. Right, first on the list of stuff that's appeared here, we've got this. Um, which is um, a vintage 
telephone, GPO, BT, old phone, rotary dial, 1970s, two-tone green. Wrong. That's not green. That's grey. Don't know what they're looking at, but that's definitely that is definitely grey. So let's have a look. And they want 14.99 for it at the minute. It's got one bid on it. Um, right. For a start, if this is right, um, it's a telephone rentals one because it's got a telephone rentals dial centre in it. Um, so it should not have anything to do with the GPO. It's probably never been connected to the GPO. And if we look at that picture that is that is the bottom of it, um, you will see there's no number that you would find on a GPO one. So that is actually a telephone rentals phone. Um, so where it says vintage telephone GPO BT, it's not. It's a telephone rentals one. It'll probably still work um, and probably be okay. Um, but it's not green. It's definitely two-tone grey. But that is fine. It's a, it's a genuine it's a genuine phone. It's a genuine thing. Fourteen ninety nine and four seventy five postage. I would say for a grey one or an ivory one, that's a bit expensive. I would not be looking to pay more than a tenner for a grey or an ivory example, um, unless it was a very nice condition early seven oh six. Um, right, next thing down. Around about the same price, fifteen pound. Buy it now, and five five pound twenty postage. Um, there's this is what you don't want. This is what you want to avoid at all costs. Um, it's uh, it's a cream old style telephone, and fair enough to the seller, they have put old style telephone, but it is not an old telephone. It's a brand new one. Um, and if we click on it, you can tell it's brand new because in the middle of the dial here, it, it's not a dial, they're actually push buttons and it's got a star and a hash key. Basically, if something's got star and hash on it, it's probably not old, at least not here in the UK. Um, so that, I wouldn't give you a tenner for it. Fiver, most, at the most a fiver. In fact, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it. Um, Christopher2000 in the chat has said, did you get your email I sent you about how to wire the LEDs to the trim phone? Um, yes, I did, Chris. I, I, I did get that, and uh, and I've got to look into it. I've not tried it yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure what you've said is right. Um, so I am going to try it, but I've not given it a go yet because I've been a bit busy this week. But yeah, yeah, stick, uh, stick with it because I'm going to, going to give it a go that. Right, we're going to keep going down this down this eBay list. Um, uh, Jimmy says, "What's a rental phone?" This one. Um, it's it's a company called Telephone Rentals, Jimmy. Um, they were a company that supplied um, basically um, private exchanges and the uh, telephone instruments to go on those private exchanges to big uh, big companies and factories and things like that you normally find them in big office blocks because they'd have like a like a pax uh, exchange in the basement or something like that and then lots of these telephones on their own internal system and what telephone rentals and one or two other companies did was they supplied basically the same phones that they supplied to to uh, the gpo um but they supplied them privately to these private companies um, um, and one of the companies that supplied phones was this company, Telephone Rentals. Um, and so that's uh, that's what that is all about. You often see 706s from Telephone Rentals uh, as well. Um, and, they, and they look a bit odd because they've often just got numbers around the uh, dial bezel um, instead of numbers and letters, 706s. So basically, it's a privately supplied phone. Um, uh, Chris says he tested the LEDs on a GPO 746 phone. Um, yeah, well, I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work. The only thing I'm wondering, Chris, about the LED thing um, is if the... Um, if the voltage on the line went up, would it blow the LED? Um, 
because it's doing it when it's off hook so you're using the off hook um, off hook voltage but if you're on a short line and near the exchange would it be getting too high a voltage to the LED or have you put a resistor in front of the LEDs or something or have you just because from what I could see of the video you sent me it looked like you just put the LEDs in two LEDs in series but we'll we'll come back to it next week that because I'm going to have a go this week and I'm going to see if I can uh, see if I can make it work in the trim fold this week so we will definitely come back to it right I'm going to go back onto these trim phones and things here right right now here's something else dodgy these turn up a lot on eBay at the minute and you can get caught out with these they're from China right that's a warning sign when you see anything that says from China on it that's a warning when it comes to old telephones uh, antique style home telephone retro vintage old-fashioned home dial phone it's not it's not even a real telephone it's just an ornament so a lot of them do say ornament but this one doesn't this one's really really trying to get away with it antique style home telephone retro vintage old-fashioned home dial phone brand new it says so let's have a look what the description says about it seller assumes all responsibility for this listing and description British desk in the 1920s 1930s this art deco style home phone will add a vintage touch to your home decor telephones are elaborately crafted with artistic brass accents details metal die cast handset and classic coil telephone handset cords makes a perfect gift a stylish home phone or antique office desk phone perfect for photography props and dollhouse decorations material resin right that that should make some alarm bells ring with you but it doesn't say it's not actually a phone but I'm telling you now it's not actually a phone and similarly the one below it it's not a real phone it's just a lump of resin in the shape of a phone and the one below that as well same thing not a real phone lump of resin in the shape of a phone so th these are the, these are the things the these thing three that are on screen now these are things you've really really got to watch for because you will be sorely disappointed i mean that bottom one looks a bit dodgy if you look at it it looks all wonky and that but trust me they are just lumps of cast resin when you get them they are not actually telephones at all so um, they've sold 32 of them so there's going to be 32 disappointed people in the world right moving swiftly on we've actually got something here now that is proper um a vintage bakelite bells london old style telephone i've got no idea how they get these titles for these listings but this is basically a 300 series as uh, as many of you will know and it looks like a real one so let's have a closer look at it and let's see if it is a real one or not um right it could be i need to have a closer look at that though the dial center right right so i'm looking at the dial center and what i'm trying to see is if is if the if the uh, label is held in by a chrome split ring and it looks like it might be but it looks like it might have been put in in the wrong position in that but there is something not quite right about it can you see what it is right make that bigger look at this gap between the finger stop here and the zero you see that big gap there dials on UK GPO issued issued phones didn't have that gap there 
and normally the split ring would be silver like the uh, like the dial and it would split at the bottom there because it's shaped and it goes to a hole at the bottom there this seems to be split further round so this isn't the a GPO split ring I don't think I think this is just a round um, split ring not the sort of square square edged one that the GPO used and I think you're going to find this is an Indian version of a 300 series phone because they had this much cheaper split ring arrangement in them and they had these dials with this big gap here note there's no draw underneath either because they didn't bother with that in India. Now it may still be quite old this. It may well still be quite old. But I think this is going to be an Indian phone. If it's not Indian. It's then of some kind of private system in the UK. So let's have a look at the other photos. Ah. Now. Close up of the dial here you see. It says Bell Telephones London on it. Why would you write Bell Telephones London on the dial? For starters, Bell Telephones weren't from London. Bell Telephones, America. So somebody's just stamped that on the dial just to make that look older than it actually is, I would say. But it's not bad as these things go. I mean, it does look genuinely quite old. but it's not right and when you look underneath it can you see under there it says ITI Indian Telephone Industries so it is an Indian phone that's come over here and may even have had a different dial put on um, to make it more sellable make it look more western but of course they've got it wrong so that is definitely ITI, that's an Indian version of a 300 series. And look underneath, her Collectibles UK Limited, 165 Portobello Road, Red Lion Arcade in London. So it looks like this is one of a big batch that's probably been imported by these guys at some point. And it's been knocked out now as a British phone. But it's not. It's an Indian phone that's been imported. Probably not as old as you'd think. It's probably 1970s or maybe even 1980s possibly. It's been imported. This sticker's been stuck on quite recently because it's got a mobile phone number. And the London telephone number is 020. If it was an old London telephone number it would just be 01. Um... So it's a it's a relatively uh, relatively new phone that's been imported. So it's not a 300 series. Having said that, for a fiver, I'd probably pay a tenner for it. I pro I'd probably pay up to 50, up to 20 quid for it because they can still be nice phones. The cases are still nice. The cases um, the story goes that the cases are probably made out of the original molds. So yeah, it's. Uh, it's probably uh, probably quite good. Christopher 2000, going back to the LEDs in line with the hook switch on a phone to make the dial light up. He says he put a 1K resistor in the lead um, to the uh, to the LEDs. So we will have a look at it, and uh, and we will uh, we'll get back onto that one next week. Right, uh, Dominic Meakin is with us. Uh, is with us here in the chat. Hi, Dominic. He says he's um, uploaded some pictures of the 722L he has onto Flickr. Right, stick the Flickr ad address in the chat, then Dominic, and we'll and we'll have a look. Is, can you can you do that? Can you stick an address in a Flickr address, and we'll we'll have a look. Um, right. So let's go through a few more of these. So uh, here's another one of these, one of these silly resin wall art things. That's not even a phone. Next one down. Now here's a good example of a private phone. Um, um, who was asking me about private phones? Jimmy. 
uh, what's a rental phone he was saying this is a good example of a rental phone here jimmy and at, at nine quid was five a postage it's probably worth a worth a punt this one it looks like a, a 706 it is a 706 basically um, as you can see you, you look up here and you see that gives it away as a 706 but look it's just got numbers around here no letters that's because it's not one that was supplied um, to uh, to the GPO this would have been a privately supplied one it's possibly an Ericsson phone or um, they they did quite a lot or it might be GEC or somebody like that but this looks right this does you know it, it, it looks old it looks right um, um, we have a look at it don't look like they've took any photos of the underside um, another thing here at the at the at the top if you look it's got a chrome carrying handle they were never fitted on GPO issued phones chrome carrying handles didn't happen they never had chrome carrying handles on on a GPO phone um, so that tells me it's a privately issued one it's probably an Ericsson phone this uh, to guess and look here can you see here what's happened here that's because this dial bezel and I'm always going on about this is painted on the back so you can't scratch the numbers off accidentally on the front it's painted on the back and it's not screen printed on the front it's actually a clear piece of plastic with the numbers painted in white on reverse and then painted all over black behind the numbers so when you look at it from the other side it shows and what happens is sometimes the paint becomes detached and that's what's happened just here um, it's become detached from the plastic the paint there and that's why it's got a, a scabby bit there so you could possibly get some black paint and paint all the back of this black again and you'd not totally get rid of that but you'd make it look a lot better than it does at the minute it also wants a, uh, a button or at least a button blank on the top there don't know who it is selling this but it's somebody quite interesting because they've got like carburetors and things on the floor down here look so it's somebody quite interesting um but yeah for for a for a tenor's bid you might want to have a go at that one that's quite a nice one right um again another one of these horrible resin monstrosities don't touch it with a barge pole it's not even a phone uh, next one down something that looks old really isn't landline phone old-fashioned design working okay but it's modern how do you tell it's modern well it's got an LCD screen in the middle of it for a start um, but also it's got a star and a hash on it and then the buttons they're not a dial the buttons so the only phones with buttons that you should want really are ones with buttons that are not laid out to look like a dial if it's got buttons laid out to look like a dial it's wrong again another one of these horrible resin things who buys these 19 watchers who the hell is watching that all right uh, telephone old-fashioned 1980s rotary dial incomplete no kidding it is incomplete um, 14 pound too much fiver fiver maybe but 14 pounds too much even though it is a bit unusual because it's got a cut out for a lamp at the top left there next down two-tone green rotary dial old style telephone this again is a 706 and this is a proper 706 because it's got the correct darker color bezel um, the finger wheels when they're right on these they kind of they kind of go white over time um, it's just what the aging process does this looks right and look at the dial bezel on this it it's got letters and numbers so this is a GPO issued one and it's also been converted at least it's got the line code on it whether it's been converted correctly inside or not who knows but it has got the line code on it for plug and socket the only thing is it's 30 pound now if this phone is working you might want to pay 30 pound for it i personally never believe a phone is working um 
but yeah if you want just want a working phone you could spend 30 pound on that it's quite a, it's quite a nice example i would be waiting for one to come up around about the 10 or 15 pound mark though um, that wasn't necessarily listed as working uh, is this listed as working two-tone green rotary dialog style phone condition is used but in full working order so it is listed as working so that's reasonable for 30 pound but because i can mend them i wouldn't be paying 30 pound for one because there's plenty come up not working for less than 30 pound here uh, yellow old rotary dial telephone 746f right it's not yellow it's ivory it's just slightly suntanned ivory and you immediately spot with this there's a problem the dial has a gone past the finger stop which it shouldn't be possible to do um, oh yeah it can be possible to get in that position yeah if you just dial like one and a half instead of two yeah um, but it's not returned the dial so I would say the spring has gone in that dial which is a full dial stripped down you're probably going to need a new dial which is going to cost you between 10 and 20 pound so 15 pound for the phone no nah, i don't think i'd bother but it's not yellow but on this picture it does look yellow so is it yellow certainly doesn't look it on that one but it does look as if it might be on that one now, if it is topaz yellow, it's a bit more desirable because it's a, it's a rarer colour. But is it topaz yellow? Doesn't look it there. It certainly looks ivory there. But there, it possibly is topaz yellow. And there aren't any more photos. So, you pays your money, you takes your chance with that one. But I think I'd be leaving that alone because there's that little bit of not sure about it. Yellow, old rotary dial telephone, 746F. Needs refurbishing to work in order. Condition is used, delivery by post. That ought to be a tenner, really. Not £15. Because remember, you've got £7 postage on it. Now, it doesn't cost £7 to post these things. So, um, you know, somebody's making some money on that somewhere along the line. By the time you've added your £15 and your £7 on, um, you're up to £22 for a phone that may or may not be topaz yellow and needs a, needs a line cord on, which is going to cost you another fiver. And also, it needs something doing with the dial. So you're going to be up to 40 or 50 quid for that phone before you've got it working. So £15 as it stands is too much. Uh, Christopher 2000 says the 706 that we showed uh, looks like his. What the green one, Chris? <laughs> that one. That's quite that's quite a nice one. That that's quite a nice one, but a little bit on the pricey side, but but not bad. Um, right, let's keep going. Forty nine pounds from China. Retro rotary phone, vintage turntable dial. You know, I'm just not even going to go there. It does look, though, this one, as if it has got a real dial on it. Uh, but some of these Chinese phones do. But, but some of these dials don't work by pulse dialing. They work in other ways. They've got, like, an optical switch on the back, some of them. And, that, and this one, you see, it's got a star and a hash key again, or a star and a hash position on the dial. So, again, brand new. If you like the look at it, okay, take your chance, get it from China. But it's in no way vintage, in no way an antique. Same for the next two down as well. Um, right, here we are. Vintage retro plastic old-fashioned telephone brown 746F, fully working, dial-up. 
Okay, yeah, it's a nice one. It's a rare colour because the 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 um, the brown ones uh, came along a lot later. They came along sort of in the early to mid 1980s. The brown ones. They should always be fitted with a new style plug and socket cord. Um, they were never hardwired in. That's why you never see the little switch boxes in brown uh, that went on the went on the end of the drop cable because these were all were always plugged in. They called them yeoman phones when they were new, and you bought them. You you couldn't rent one of these. You bought these outright from a uh, from a telecom shop. Um, Forty five pound though is too much to pay for it. Don't pay more than about fifteen pound for one. That you're not sure if it works or not. Um, certainly don't pay more than about forty fifty pound for a fully working and tested one. Um, um, that's forty five pounds per four pound by it. Now that will need to be fully working and tested. It does say it's fully working, but I wouldn't pay that for it. I'd buy one that's not working and fix it, and I'd buy one for a tenner. The one below, now this is this is a nice one, um, old BT GPO dial telephone 706 and what colour do you reckon that is? Lots of people think these are green, but it's not, it's blue, that's Concord blue. Um, and again it looks right, that uh, does to me. Um, you know it's got the right amount of discoloration on it. Um, it does it does genuinely look right it's got the old uh, the old line cord that needs changing on it um, but really it's too much money 29.99 30 pound plus six pounds 50 so 35 pound 36 36 pound 50 or oh, 36 pound 49 um, before you put the line cord on it and you don't know if it's going to work or not it probably will but you've got work to do. It's too much money. Don't buy it. Um, old British telephone number three two eight uh, fifty pounds. Right. This picture doesn't look right somehow. I don't know why. It just doesn't look right. Um, but let's have a look. Let's mouse over it. Right. Again. Not quite right. Look at the shape of this, this, uh, this finger stop. See how it's curved on one side and straight on the other side? That means that is a dial 21, not a dial 12. These phones originally had a dial 12 fitted to them, not a 21. Some point, somebody has fitted... 21 to this and they've put on somehow a um, a finger wheel that is um, stainless steel but although that could have been done when the phone was in service I would doubt that it was because the what what uh, the GPO were supposed to do with these when they were in service if they fitted the dial 21 they were supposed to fit a black finger wheel to them that was that that was the correct procedure uh, not a uh, not a metal one but it doesn't look bad it's got some kind of standoff it must have behind the behind the finger wheel because it is the right distance away from that plate if you get a if you get a a finger wheel from a dial 12 and put it onto a dial 21 it'll fit but the finger wheel is too close to the plate with the numbers on and you can't get your finger in it deep enough to to dial comfortably but that does look the right distance away, so there must be a spacer between the two there. But that is definitely a dial 21, not a dial 12. So again, it's not bad. But if you wanted a, if you wanted a genuine period correct one, you'd really, I think, want one. Um, if you were going for something for 50s look, you'd want one with a dial 12. If you were going for a 60s or maybe even a 70s look, because they were still around in the 70s, you'd want one with a dial 21. 
but you would want one with a black finger wheel on it not a uh, not a stainless steel one um, Dominic says yuck those retro phones look horrible I agree Dominic they do uh, old BT telephone converse 180 cream £3.80 you know something that's all right £3.80 um, you know you can buy that for £3.80 um, you pay three pound eighty to get a to get a line cord or, or a curly cord or something. So you might buy that for bits for three pound eighty. Uh, retro red old style telephone twenty five pounds and five pound postage thirty quid. Again, if it's fully working, okay. If it's not fully working, it's too much. But red ones do fetch a premium for some reason. I've never quite been able to fathom. But it is right. It's a seven four six. It's a late style case. Uh, with the little horns up here um, somebody has messed with it at some point though because it's got no dial label in the middle um, you know it's been blanked off so somebody's had that apart at some point because it's not got the original dial label in there so if somebody's had that dial label out or had that apart what might they have had apart inside it that's what you have to ask it's got a cut cord but that's fine um, because you're going to replace the line cord anyway um, so yeah that doesn't look too bad that one a five pound postage reasonable postage on it for 30 quid um, not too bad if you if you're desperate for a red 746 now next 746 old style telephone this is what you do not want by any means it's not a 746 they call it a 746 but it's not what we know as a 746 it looks like it but look it's got horrible rubber keys instead of a proper dial it's just nasty and new and horrible um you know you know they're, they're just not nice at all they're really not and when you pick them up they're incredibly lightweight some of them some variations of them actually have a lump of steel just a lump of steel bar stuck down inside them to make them feel heavier and make them feel more quality but there's just a lump of rusty steel stuck inside them do not touch that with a barge pole right um, green old fashioned vintage telephone 999 operator phone it's a 746 it looks pretty right to me um, can't see anything wrong with that again though too expensive £25 it's a fairly common phone there's nothing really special about it other than the fact it's a Mark 1 case on it um, look, look here those little horn things at the top of the case there they just dip down gently under the handset that's a mark one case there's not a, like a cutaway for the handset to sit in it just sort of rests on there so that's a mark one case that is um it looks like it's probably got a genuine dial label in there as well um from the time so that looks right but it's too expensive at £25 or £6.90 postage. It ought to be about a tenner, maybe 15 quid. If I was buying that from a car boot sale and, and it was more than a tenner, I would probably walk away. Um, again, too expensive, but £29.99 plus £6.50 postage. Uh, 706i BTGPO is not. It's a 706. Um, quite a nice one this that center there although that looks white that was probably originally gray and it's gone that color these original finger wheels fade with age so that is probably right that probably was gray originally that finger wheel this looks right interestingly it's a 706 though and the case is still gray it's not gone yellow so what I'm wondering now is is that an early case it shouldn't be because with those chevrons and that like that and it should be a late case but has it somehow got an early diacon case on it it's got quite a nice shine on it um so it may well be a diacon one doesn't say 
it does however say dispatched with Hermes untested so it'll probably be broken when it arrives if it's been dispatched with Hermes if that's a Diacon case I wouldn't have it come through the post if I was buying something in a di with a Diacon case I would not let the seller post it under any circumstances because it will arrive broken certainly if it goes on Hermes because I think they play football with the parcels at Hermes um, it's quite nice in that it's got an on off button as well for the bells that one so that's quite a nice one but it's grey grey is not a desirable colour 29.99 if it's fully working, that's what that's what you'd expect to pay roughly for um, a fully refurbished phone. When I used to sell these in an antique centre, when I used to refurbish them, get them working and sell them, totally working all your money back in an antique centre, I used to sell them for around about the 40 quid mark. Um, and that's, a, that's two or three years ago. Um, so that's quite a nice one. It's not discoloured in any way. It is definitely grey, except for the finger wheel. That's a bit discoloured. But it... It looks right, um, um, so yeah, you might pay 30 quid for it if you were desperate for one. Um, next one down, again another grey phone, far less desirable, a Mark II case on a 746, far less desirable, 26.99. Um, that is a tenner's worth of phone all day long, but it's not 26.99's worth um, this bell set this is strange I don't know what this is I, I've not seen one like this before um, it looks odd this let's have a look if there's anything in the pictures that tells us anything uh, mark something gen set Hmm. I don't know what that is. Is it a telephone bell? Is it actually a f telephone bell? It certainly seems to have got a, a bell, a bell, uh, set of bell coils in it, but the clapper's missing. No, up here, there should be a clapper that goes to that piece of metal there it should be clapper sticking up there so that bit of metal goes up and down like that when it's attracted and repelled by those coils makes the clapper go from side to side the clapper is completely missing it's a common fault they break off but it's a devil of a thing to repair um, so you know ten pound postage 23 pounds services from outside UK where is it it's in Romania then so maybe it's a Romanian phone or something so maybe it is a bit rare but always watch out for the postage because you can say oh that's a tenner yeah I'll put a bid on that and then get stung 23 pounds for the postage more than twice what you've actually paid for the item particularly if you're getting stuff from America that happens uh, Arthur G says I have a few Diacon cases with chevrons the grey area is when did they stop using Diacon and start putting on the chevrons? Uh, there was a crossover period. Right. Um, yes, um, you're right, Arthur. There was. Um, I reckon Diacon stopped. I don't know this for certain. This is just from my observations of things that I've looked at. I reckon they stopped using Diacon in around about 1962 or 1963. And I also think around about the same time is when they started putting the chevrons, the little arrows, on the, uh, on the dial plates rather than the dial plates just being blank, which they were prior to that. Um, now... They were being made by lots of different companies, these phones, remember, for the GPO and also private versions. Private versions were turning out slightly different, with slightly different dials and things on them. Um, but for the GPO, one company probably changed over to slightly different time to another company, because the companies might have been using up their stocks of 
nail plates and things like that. So I reckon it's around about 62, 63. Arthur agrees. He says he reckons it's 62, 63. Um, but I think it probably varied company to company as to how many stock, what stock of bits they'd got. Because they weren't going to throw a load of bits away that they'd got left. Uh, they'd use them up first and then, then swap over. So I'm not... Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure, but 62, 63 um, is, uh, is what I, when I think it happened. Um, Dominic says, I have a really nice example of a Daikon 706 from 1963. I brought it unconverted with a Bakelite connection box. Interesting that it had a Bakelite connection box on it. That connection box must have been on the end of the line in the house on the end of the drop cable and when they came and put the new phone in in 1963 they must have just put the new phone on the old box rather than putting a new box in that must be what happened there they must have had a Bakelite phone before wherever that came from uh, yeah yes Arthur Arthur says that uh, he thinks that the change from Bakelite cases 62 63 ish and the ish is most important and I, I agree entirely. Uh, I don't think we'll ever know the exact answer, Arthur, because I think it varied with the companies that were making these phones. Now, um, you know, is a vintage rotary dial telephone. Do we think it is vintage? It says Royal Mail in it in UK stock. And, oh, yeah. Right. It looks a little bit like an American 500, but look, it's got that star and that ash key on it. Again, it's got something dodgy printed on it, antique telephone printed on the uh, on the dial. When you when you make a telephone, you make a telephone new, so you don't print antique telephone on a new phone, do you? Unless it's trying to be something it's not. And it's got the star and the ash again. Don't even don't even think about it. Right, now this one's an interesting one. This could be quite nice, and £127 in a penny could be quite cheap if it's right. Old Red British GPO 332 Bakelite Telephone Art Deco Draw Phone Plug-in. Right, for a start, it's not Bakelite if it's red. <coughs> you can't make Bakelite in red. Bakelite is always dull colours, it's always browns or blacks. A burgundy sort of colour, something like that. 300 series phones were made in ivory. They were made in red and they were made in green as well as the common black. Um, but they were made out of different materials. Now the ivory ones, I forget what they were made out of, but it's something that's not Bakelite, it's something else and it degrades with time. So they go a bit funny, the ivory ones. The red ones and the green ones, I am told, and I've never examined one up close, I've certainly not got one, because they fetch ridiculous amounts of money, but the red ones and the green ones, I am told, were made out of diacon. They were an early use of diacon, which is basically a form of perspex diacon. Um, so they should be... That should be Diacon, that phone, if it's right. Now I'm looking at it there and really can't tell. It's got the draw, so it's a, it could be a genuine 300 series phone. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the photos. Right. It looks like it's got a good shine on, so it could be Diacon, because Diacon always has a nice sort of glassy shine. Look how close the... Um, finger stop is to the first hole there in the in the in the in the finger wheel. That shows that's good. That's where it should be. No big gap there. That's that's right. You can see the ring around here, the the uh, the split ring thing that holds the uh, holds the dial label in, and at the bottom there. If you know these things, you'll know, you can see there that the splitting goes, 
it goes through 90 degrees then goes through a hole in the bottom there and there's a little cut out in the bottom of the label so that all looks right to me it's got the drawer on the front again it looks right it's got a red cord on it that looks a bit too good and a bit too new maybe that's been replaced but we'll we'll let them replace a cord um so yeah this this looks right this looks like it probably is made out of diacon it's got a new line cord fitted to it on the back there but it's not looking bad that ah now you see this bit of damage here where it's chipped out it breaks almost like glass the way glass breaks you know when you break a bit off a piece of old glass um, and if you if you ever chipped a, a thick glass dish or something like that this breaks in the same sort of way that in a way is good because it's kind of proof it is diacon so so this phone looks right to me again the brakes they just look right for diacon so yeah that I would say is a straight up red 300 series phone it looks really really right 332L batch sample um, so it went back to the factory and was uh, refurbished in 1965 so that was issued you see in uh, in 1965 hello my, my chat's just gone strange um, don't know what happened there are we still on it's gone all weird it's gone black so yeah that that phone looks right to me Right, just bear with me a second because it looks like um, it looks like something weird is happening with the, with the live feed. Are we are we still on? Are we still are we still in vision? Can can somebody tell me? Um, while while we're while we're doing that, um, Arthur G says he has a big stack of Chevron dial plates for seven oh six. If anyone needs one or two was going to put them on eBay also alpha numeric bezels the alpha numeric bezels I'd be uh, I'd be interested in if they if they're genuine proper ones you know clear ones with the stuff on the back you know with the printing on the back um, yeah I would I would definitely be uh, be interested in the uh, in the alpha numeric bezels possibly there Arthur um, Oh, Arthur says yes. He can still see me, so it's just it's just at my end. It's gone strange then. Right, let's have a look what's happened to it. Let me see if I can just refresh my uh, refresh my uh, my feed a minute on my phone where I'm looking at the chat. Um, live, it says. Right, I think I think I've come back. Um, yeah I've come back I think excellent I'm back to life um, so yeah so we've gone through a few of these things now we've got we've gone through a few of these uh, a few of these phones but that one is the star of what we've found on eBay um, this afternoon I think that one is 127 pounds and a penny it's had two bids on the minute it's got an hour and 34 minutes to go if you've got a couple of hundred quid to spare and you want a really nice phone that is genuine it's got some genuine age related damage on it that but nothing nothing major that's one to go for postage is 11 pounds it says on it i wouldn't let them post it it's diacon remember and it breaks as easy as look at it um, um, so be be uh, be aware if you are going to put a bid on that and you are going to spend maybe 150 200 quid on it 
um, be prepared to go and collect it, even if it means you've got to go on the train or something and go and get it in your hand. Don't let them post it because it'll get damaged in the post. That sure as eggs is eggs. Um, Uh, Christopher 2000 says he thinks it's weird that GPO and Ericsson phones are popping up in antique shops in Australia. Yeah, I think it's weird as well that, Chris, um, that, 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 that they're popping up there. Um, I, I, yeah, I wonder if a container load's gone out there uh, and somebody's trying to make money by shipping a container load out there. It's a bit like certain European ones and that pop up here all the time, like this. That I'm, that I'm doing for my antiques dealer friend of mine. He, he acquired this. Probably got it from an auction or something. But it's not a British one. Phones like this were issued in Britain in the 80s. But this isn't a British one because it's got this nut in the middle to get the dial off. So you couldn't put your British dial label on there. Um, this is not a British issue one of these. But I think somewhere along the line a ship container full of them. Um, probably all second hand at the time. Was landed here and you know gone out through all the car boot sales and antique centres in the land and and stuff and and they've sort of filtered through to me so I think that's what happens so I think that's probably what's happening in Australia I think a lot of British phones are suddenly popping up um, in Australia so I think that's what's happened I think there's been a container load go over be interesting if they're all the same or, or, or if there's like two or three um, types that have gone over that you see in a lot of certain types like how you're getting a lot of 706s or a lot of um, a lot of uh, telephone rentals 706 clones or something like that um, because I, I think there's something uh, something oddball like that going on with them so anyway we've had we've had a good look through ebay now that that's the that's the phone that i think uh, you should go for if you're wanting to spend 150 200 quid on a phone at the minute um because that genuinely does look right that one there are a lot of things out there uh ooh, genuine gpo concord blue telephone handset cable you all stock two pound fifty that sounds about right that's not bad for a concord blue cable for a for a uh, for a phone um you know and there's there's all kinds of stuff on there watch out for these as well from china again these are not real pay phones they are fakes they are just a, a resin model type thing um they're 9.99 for a ba for a baker -like junction box that's not bad for a junction box um the burger phone 25 pound I'd say about a tenner from a car boot sale you'll find those but if you want a burger phone and it's working 25 pound is not bad 69.99 here for a 300 series it looks fairly genuine that is not bad that's got a pay phone dial on it though that one I'm telling you now um, because if you look very closely at the picture can you see that thing in the middle there you put a little tiny allen key in that um, to get the dial off it's not the normal screw you will get in there and, and these were these were done to kind of make them kind of make them tamper proof so I think that's got a payphone dial on I think you'll find that's a payphone dial also watch out you're going to need a new handset cable by the looks of that there um, but for 69.99 70 pound for one of those if it's right and it's not too bad again though it has got a dial 21 look at that finger stop it's a dial 21 not a dial well it's not a dial 21 it's the thing equivalent to a dial 21 that they're using a payphone i think so i think somebody's put a payphone dial on that at some point um, um 16.50 for a french phone here um and we'll just finish this off that's not bad actually 1650 by now if you do really need something that does um that has got star and ash keys on but you still want something old how about one of these french phones they come from france they will work over here they can be converted 
um, and you've got star and hash on your phone and it looks reasonably like an old phone and it is a genuine thing it's not some kind of reproduction or copy it is genuine what they used in France that £16.50 not bad you know if you particularly want something that does tone dial in that might be the one to do I'm assuming it does tone dial in having star on the hash key on it here's something not to get I got caught out with one of these ones and ended up buying it um, and I was there in person and saw it. It was in a batch of other things. Um, but an American 500 series. But look, it's got a star and a hash. So it's wrong. And uh, an American 500 series with a British or pseudo British um, Dale label in the middle. You know, it doesn't look quite right. It's a modern phone. It's all plastic. It's nasty. £8.50. That's probably more than it's worth. Um, don't, don't touch it. Um, so you see that the, there are things you can get caught out with quite easily on, on eBay. You can easily, easily get caught out with things. Um, particularly stuff coming from China. I've not actually seen a massive amount on here that I would personally bid on today um, not at a reasonable price anyway trim phone there 50 quid 399 postage that's it that's a fairly genuine one um, you know that's that's looking good also this is quite good uh, a case for newell stock case for, tele, for a trim phone, the late trim phone that should have star and hash buttons on it. If you need a case for one of those, that's the thing to get. And it's not bad money for that because it's a rare item. Um, so yeah, there's, there's one or two things. But I'm struggling to find anything that I would probably bid on on here today. I'm really struggling. Here's something you don't want. Right. We'll, 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 we'll finish on a doozy of a bad one, shall we? Here's something you don't want. 746. Got a Mark II case. It's got a Dale bezel with alphanumerics on. Alphanumerics would never have been on a Mark II case. Alphanumerics on the Dale bezel would never have been on a light coloured bezel either. That is a modern plastic bezel, exactly the same green plastic as the case, which is probably a, probably a modern reproduction case as well. And you'll find, if you were to buy this at £79, you would find that these were screen printed on the top of the plastic. They are not, it's not painted on the back. All right. The finger wheel has also been messed with. It's just too defined around the holes. It's not... It's not curved enough around the holes, and it and it's too it's too much of a matching colour. So that's a new finger wheel. You can tell it's a new finger wheel actually because if you look at that that there and, and that finger wheel anyway, it shouldn't be a green one on a seven four six. It should be it should be a uh, it should be a clear one, and then it should have numbers, not chevrons. Again, that back plate, you'll find it's not been back painted, which they should be. You'll find those chevrons are actually screen printed on the surface and they will come off. The only good thing I'll say about this is if you look down here, the actual underlying phone, the original underlying phone that's had all this new case nonsense put on it. The original underlying phone had a... Uh, a, uh, a ringer mute thing where you could change the loudness of the ringer very few 746s has had that I think I've got one or two that have got it in my vast collection of 746s so that's good but it's not worth £79 that has been devalued by putting new bits on it you know and okay you've put a thing on white all 1212 to make it look old yeah okay but to get that anything like, you need to take that dial bezel off and sling it in the bin. You need to take that finger wheel off and sling it in the bin. You need to take that finger plate behind the finger wheel off and sling it in the bin. 
You also need to take the blanking button off and sling it in the bin because it's dark green and it should be light green. Um, you know, then you might be getting somewhere. The only thing that may have been replaced on that and, and is reasonably original is, uh, is the case, the main part of the case. But it's just not worth £79. Do not buy it. And £15 postage as well. And how come it's £15 postage when some other people only charge £5 postage? So that's a really good example of a phone not to buy. And I think we will leave it there for eBay for today. I hope you've uh, I hope you've enjoyed our uh, our little look at it. Um, I'll just catch up on the chat. Um, um, Christopher two thousand says he saw a GPO three three two phone in an antique shop in Australia for a hundred and seventy five dollars. That was probably not bad. Uh, um, when you consider getting over there and that but phones in foreign countries don't tend to fetch as much money like foreign phones in the UK don't fetch as much money as UK phones in the UK because who wants a foreign phone unless it's somebody who's a real die hard collector I mean I tend to collect American ones I don't tend to collect European ones or anything I don't tend to collect stuff from like France or Germany I have got a few but they tend to be ones that have come with other things but I do if I see them I do collect American phones and quite a few American phones turn up how the hell do they get here I don't know but quite a few do turn up so yeah it's very strange the problem with american phones is if you have to import them from america yourself you end up paying more of the import duty in that and tax and stuff than you, and postage than you do for the actual phone you can easily spend 20 quid on a phone and spend 40 quid on getting it back so um i don't often import them myself from america the only one i did um, uh, um Oh, I've, I have done two or three actually, but one that I did that is here and is on the wall up here is this one. If you want to have a have a quick look at it, is that one there on the wall, that yellow one. Um, and I just quite like the look of that. Uh, it sits there. And you can also see the 150 there is uh, the candlestick is still there waiting for some work to be done on it. So that um, about wraps it up for another day, another week even. Um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed our little look through um, through the world of eBay, and I hope we've uh, we've sorted out some of the uh, some of the what to buy and what not to buy. Um, just before we go, Arthur G says. Uh, what do you think of the slightly later phones, like the Viscounts and Statesmans? Well, they've got their place, I think, Arthur, is the, is the, is the, is the answer to that. Um, um, they, they've, they've got their place, of the, of the Viscounts and the Statesmans and things. Um, they, you know, they... They're, they're the next generation on, aren't they? So... When you think of it in a sort of museum-y type way, does a museum stop having stuff after a certain date? Or as time progresses on, should newer things be taken into the museum? Um, you know, so if a museum has... Say, say a museum in the year 2000 said, right, we only have items that are over 50 years old, so basically then only stuff built up to 1950. But now it's 2020, so now they could be having stuff built up to 1970. So, so, um, so th they have their place that, and and now if you want in viscounts and statesmen and things like that and that sort of phone, now is the time to be collecting them because they are still out there in service. Some of them, um, Granny's still got a viscount or a statesman probably in her hallway. And they are turning up at car boot sales for two and three pound if you know where to look. Um, so now is the time to get those if you want them, I would say. A bit like maybe 10 years ago was really the time to get 700 series. Um, 
So, Moogdog, oh, Moogdome is here. He says, have a 500 on eBay now. I-T-T. Um, is that you that's got the 500 on eBay then? Or, or is it... Um, I'm, I'm just I'm just having a look. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, American ITT Kellogg. Is that it? Is that the one we've done? Is that the one that you've uh, the one that you've spotted? That's uh, on there now. Uh, let me see if I can get the get the desktop back. What at the top of that screen there? Is that what you spotted there? Um, that actually looks fairly right. That it is in the UK, but it is expensive because it's thirty-two pounds six ninety-nine postage. So you're going, you so you're pushing forty pound there, and you can buy them in the US for about for about a tenner. Um, something like about fifteen dollars, twelve fifteen dollars, and then spend thirty dollars on postage to get them over here. Um, so it's all of its money that is. That's that roughly works out about the same as it would for importing one from the US. What I will say about that is it's a strange color combination because the dial bit of it and the the case of the phone are not the same color and they probably should be so something looks like it's got mixed up somewhere there um but yeah is this, is this yours or, or um oh, I, it's just put yes yes and yep on it um is this yours or is this one you've one you've just found? So sorry, there's a bit of a delay on me seeing the chat, so I don't know what you what you're replying yes to. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks a uh, it looks uh, a genuinely enough thing. The, like I say, the the case looks as if it's not the original case of the phone though, because as far as I know, and I'm not an expert, as far as I know. America didn't do this two-tone thing like that. It's looking like it's got a line. It's looking like it's got a handset cord and a dial that's probably original to the phone, and the case is new. I would say. Um, Christopher two thousand says my grandma had an old orange GPO trim phone in Australia, which was my mum's granddad's phone. He used to have. An orange trim phone. Um, oh, Moon Dog says yes, yes, it's mine. He says Thank, thanks for the opinion. Um, yeah, what, what? So, what, what's the story with this phone then, Moon Dog? Am I, am I right? Has it been recased, or was it like that when you got it? Um, because it, it definitely looks like it's had, it's had a proper case on. I would say, but just slightly the wrong colour but it's a it's a it's a proper genuine american phone that is and it's not an irish one either because you have to be a bit careful because some 500 series are irish as well so you have to be a bit careful of that um um yeah so what was i saying there? right chris um that orange trim phone um can you remember was that a dial or was that a push button that orange trim phone can you can you remember um, the reason I ask this question is um, because oops, I'm pressing the wrong button is because if it's an orange one it's something called the Snowden range and if it's one from the Snowden range particularly if it's one with a dial rather than push buttons they are valuable you're in three figures <laughs> um, basically for for unusual colors and orange is one of the rarer colors of them um, so um, that trim phone if it's a genuine orange one it must date from the 80s your granddad probably didn't have it before the 80s it must be an 80s one 
uh, so it will have uh, it will have had originally the plug and socket thing on it um, and it was one that was sold from the, through the uh, through the uh, what was then telecom shops and the, and this Snowden range it was basically a way of using up old trim phones they tended to be old refurbished trim phones that had got new funky coloured cases put on them because originally trim phones were just just either grey green or blue um, although they were sort of slight two tone on some of them um, but in the in the eighties, the Snowden range came out that basically um, used up old phones that had been returned. They'd gone through this factory in Wales or wherever, and and had been refurbished, and they put new, very bright coloured cases on them, and sent them out to the uh, what were then the telecom shops, and uh, and sold them. Um, now because it was done late on, and they didn't do that many. Um, they are now the ones to have because although they are refurbs they are seen as genuine and are um quite uh, quite rare an, or an orange one if you add a dial on it it's mega rare i would say um uh, chris says he's never seen it his mum says it had a dial on it so it was a dial one then yeah where is it now? Because <laughs> that's one that's more worth worth getting hold of. Um, the real dog says uh, says that five hundred. My phone says it's as he bought it. It looked like a buff colour on the pics when he bought it. Must have been the lighting. It's not always easy to tell. No, it's not easy to tell, is it? Were you here earlier when we were looking at that uh, that seven hundred series? And on one picture it looked it looked ivory on one picture it looked yellow and the seller said it was yellow but on the first picture it definitely looked ivory to me so i don't know if that was ivory or yellow that one i would i wouldn't like to say but it is difficult to tell but but you but you you you're right there um about the about this fight about this five one about this itt um you know you you've got it at about the right money because that's about what you'd end up paying for one if you were having one shipped from America. Um, so you, you've you've got it on at about the right money there. Um, Arthur G says I'm still having problems with the 1970s 746. Bell ringing sounds sluggish. Tried pulling putting the original link between terminals four and five. Uh, still not right. Have you tried loosening the bell, Arthur? Take the top off, loosen the screws in the top of the two bell gongs, just turn the bell gongs round slightly, because that hole in the top is offset, and when you turn them round, you will realise that you can make the bell gongs go closer to or further away from the clapper. Now, it's a bit of trial and error. Sometimes you have to turn the opposite way than you think. Sometimes when it's a bit sluggish, you might have to turn it so the bell gongs further away from the clapper so the clapper can get more momentum before it hits it and it, and it, makes, it, and it makes it louder. So, um, yeah, that's what I'd say. Try loosening the bell gong. You've done the right thing putting the strap back in instead of the resistor as well. You've done, you've done the right thing there. Um, but it will zap the power from from other phones in your house probably having that strap in um, so other phones probably won't ring so that's why the resistor is normally in there but certainly to try it leave the resistor out put the strap back in but I, I would say it's the bell gongs so so um, twiddle the bell gongs round and uh, and see if you can get it louder than that Christopher had a similar problem with the phone didn't you Christopher in you said you twiddled the bell gongs and and made it ring a lot better um i says yeah he's done that it's something to do with the mechanism ah right if it's something to do with the mechanism normally they have two coils two bell coils some very late ones didn't some very late ones only had one bell coil but normally they have two bell coils. I'm wondering if one of those coils is duff, if it's only being pulled one way. See, normally the ring is AC. 
So one coil energizes and pulls the clapper that way, and then the other coil energizes and pulls the clapper that way. If only one coil is energizing, it's only pulling the clapper that way perhaps, and nothing to pull it back then. So it will might just be doing a faint tinkle. So I'm wondering if you've got a duff coil. I would say take the take this will involve a little bit of soldering, but take the coils out, take it disconnect it all, disconnect the coils and measure the coils measure the if you've got a multimeter measure for continuity in the coils and see if you've got continuity in the coils because it's sounding to me like you might have um, now if one coil was out it wouldn't work at all because um, because they're in series aren't they yeah so it's not be a dead coil because it is trying to work that's an interesting one I'd say you've got to swap the coils then yeah try it try another pair of coils that mechanism should come out fairly easily if you've got another one you can swap it with to try it um, try try swapping the coils That is, it's going both ways, but somehow it's sluggish. Perhaps it just wants a bit of a bit of uh, oil or lubrication or something on it as well, Arthur. Because they do get gummed up sometimes as well. So perhaps, uh, perhaps there's something, uh, something there. Perhaps it just wants a bit of a bit of lubrication. And and then the next thing I'm, I'm wondering is, are you getting enough power down the line? Is some other phone zapping the power um, so it's not getting enough power to ring it reliably is there something else on your system that's zapping the power or are you ringing it through some oddball um, system like a virgin like a virgin cable box or something like that because if your phones are connected to some of these newfangled boxes and things um, all these analog terminal adapters and stuff sometimes they just don't put out enough power to ring the bells in old-fashioned phones um, you know and, and one phone might ring another one might not <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a bit it's a bit hit and miss um, but yeah it sound, sounds like an interesting fault that one yeah send me a Send me an email, Arthur. Go on, go on the website, andyshed.callpress.net, which is here. Go on there and uh, and uh, and uh, fill in the contact us form and send me a message about it, Arthur. And uh, and then uh, I'll uh, I'll get in touch with you and we'll, we'll we'll sort that one out because I might be I might be able to dig out a uh, a couple of bell coils or something for you to try it with. Right, okie dokie, that about wraps it up for today. We've been here for an hour and 23 minutes, believe it or believe it not. Um, a big thanks to everybody who has watched this today. I hope we've given you a bit of an idea on uh, how eBay works and the trials and tribulations of using eBay. Um, as you see, there are some things on there you shouldn't touch with a barge pole if you're wanting to buy old phones. There are other things on there that... Are worth having um, but it's knowing what's what um, and that is very very difficult um, the main thing I will say about phones on eBay is look at the pictures don't take too much uh, notice of the descriptions because the people who are listing those phones are not likely experts they are likely just ordinary people who really don't know what they're listing so they get it wrong just by just by pure ignorance basically and with no fault of their own they could be scammers like all these people listing these resin things in china um 
you know it's unlikely you're going to get somebody who is going to be an expert and be truthful about it so try and get all the information from the pictures rather than from the description and read between the lines in the description read try and read what they've left out but if it says fully working it should be fully working make sure if it's fully working it's fully working and main advice again i said this earlier but i'll repeat it again if you buy anything made out of diacon do not get it sent through the post whatever you do if you're buying something made out of diacon it's rare enough you have probably have paid enough for it that it is worth getting on a bus getting in your car getting on a train going and collecting it and if the seller won't let you do it by a clex then don't have it because it will get damaged in the post and you'll have a hell of a job um, trying to get any recompense for it from eBay um, so thanks very much for uh, watching um, thanks to all the people in the chat thanks to uh, thanks to Arthur and uh, Moog and Dominic and Christopher and all the other people in there as well too many to list there's been about 10 people in the chat today um, so uh, thanks very much for that remember as always you can catch back episodes and things over on andyshed.callpress.net and if you've not done so already give us a like and give us a subscribe we're trying to get to that magic 1000 subscriber mark uh, when eBay lets us when, not eBay, when YouTube lets us do more stuff and that, including mobile live streams and things. Um, so we're trying to get to that magic magic thousand subscriber mark. We're, we're at about, I think, about 800 and something, about 810 or 815 or something at the minute, I think we're at. So we're trying to get to that magic thousand. So if you've not done so already, give us a like and give us a subscribe on there as well. And remember to click that little bell icon if you want notifications when we do more videos as well. If you don't want notifications, because not everybody does want their phone pinging away all the time saying so-and-so's got a new video out, just don't click the bell icon. But do give us a subscribe. Okay, that is it for this week. We'll be back around about the same time, same place next Sunday. Remember, new time, 6 o'clock, not 6.30. It's also Chris, so Christopher doesn't have to stay up so late, you see, out there in Australia. <laughs> we will see you next week. Have a good one. Bye for now.